Hello everyone and welcome back to Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie. Today we're continuing the discussion about educational board games. This is part two of the video series. Part one was all about board games for the whole family, including our youngest learners, and I'll link that video down for you below. Today we'll talk about games that have a bit more complexity or strategy. A lot of these games are recommended for ages 10 to 13, but sometimes younger players can join in as well. I've tried to choose games that are more accessible online through Amazon, so many of the links down below in the description are affiliate links, so if you choose to purchase, thank you for supporting Unfiltered Gamer. Our first category is Exploring the World Around Us. I love how board games can take inspiration from the world around us and show us a new part of the world. What makes these games stand out as educational? These games can be a great way to introduce a new topic and get kids interested in exploring further about that topic, whether through documentaries, videos, articles, novels, or more. First up, we'll get competitive with evolution. Evolution allows players to explore energy cycles and adaptation. Players are adding traits to create their own specific and unique animals. There's a limited amount of food and a trait that will turn some species into carnivores. So players have to carefully manage their resources, like the food supply, which are limited, just like in a real environment. Evolution the Beginning is a very similar but simplified version of the game, which is great for younger players. However, if you do have some experience playing modern board games as a family, I highly recommended going for the full game of Evolution. Next, we're going hiking with Trekking the National Parks. In Trekking, players are collecting trail stones and claiming national parks as they move across a map of the United States. Players get to learn the names and locations of the different national parks. While easy to learn and fun to play, there is some strategy and a competitive element to the game. I do want to say I think this game could have had even more educational value added in, such as some more information and cool, interesting tidbits about each of the national parks, maybe even their climate or biome, and a little bit more of an accurate map, maybe including the state names on there. But overall, it's still a solid game and a great way to introduce the national parks and maybe plan your next trip. An honorable mention I wanted to include in this category is Wingspan. While I don't own the game, I've played it a couple of times and I love that there's over a hundred species of birds in the game and each of the cards have tons of facts about that bird. But it is hard to find a copy of this game so I left it on the honorable mentions list. On to the next category. In the previous video, I talked a lot about spatial reasoning, which is how we figure out how objects move through two and three dimensional space. A lot of these games are categorized as puzzle games. So the games I'm going to talk about next help us develop these spatial reasoning skills. In tiny towns, players are building their own town on their individual player board. Players take turns choosing resources and each player has to add that resource to their board in a grid. When the pattern of your resources matches the pattern on the cards, you can take off those resources and add that building to your card, which also opens up more space to continue creating more buildings. As players are visualizing how to mimic that pattern on their board, even flipping and rotating the pattern, they're developing pattern recognition as well as facial reasoning skills. This game also has a solo version where you're competing against yourself, trying to get a higher score each game. This is also a great option if you have a kid who needs to build up some confidence before playing a competitive game like this with others. This is Sagrada, a turn-based strategy game where you are building a beautiful mosaic stained glass using colorful dice. However, you must follow certain rules for placing those dice on your individual building cards, as well as not allowing dice of the same color or number to be next to each other. This is where the math element of probability comes into play. Depending on how you place your dice, you can make it easier or harder for yourself on your next turn. Sometimes you may not even be able to place a dice if you found yourself in a rough corner. Like a lot of other puzzle games, it's a great game to build productive struggle in that the more you play, the better you're going to get. In addition, there's an element of 
you're kind of playing against yourself and that you can try to get a higher score each time in addition to playing against the other players. Up here is City Skyline, one of my top games of 2019. And if you want to see the full list of our top games from 2019, I'll link that video in the description down below. City Skylines plays one to four players and it's a cooperative game, which means all the players are working together towards a common goal. Players are working together to build, balance, and maintain a full city, including residential buildings, industrial buildings, commercial buildings, support buildings, and trying to manage the finances and budget, as well as keep crime and pollution and all that stuff down. There are a lot of moving parts to the game, which the players get to discuss and problem solve amongst themselves at every stage. In the building part, we're developing spatial reasoning skills because we get to choose from the different shape pieces, decide where they're going to go and best fit so that we can continue to build the city. There's also the opportunity to build communication skills and teamwork because we're all working together to build that city and you kind of get to see the city grow and unfold before you, which is very inspiring and makes you want to persevere and create an even better city next time. There's also the opportunity to develop teamwork and communication skills as we're all working together to build the city. This is another one of those games where you're developing productive struggle and getting better at the game over time. It may even inspire kids to explore some careers in city planning and city management. There's a lot to this game, but I highly recommend it. In our final category, I'm going to talk about some more advanced science themed games. Genius Games is lauded for their science-based games, and I'm going to talk about two of their games, Periodic and Cytosis. I love how Genius Games matches the game mechanics to the science element that they're introducing. In Periodic, players are exploring the periodic table, which is important in chemistry and understanding how the world around us is built. There's a heavy emphasis on the different groupings and attributes of the elements. These groups are important not only to the location of the element, but also how that element functions, which I think is a great connection to make in chemistry, in addition to just getting familiar with the elements and their different attributes. In cytosis, players experience the process of creating protein hormones in the body. While not intending to be a full textbook explanation, which would be kind of boring, players are immersed in the world of the cell and get to explore the concepts and terminology. The term protein hormone becomes much more memorable when you have this type of experience to attach it to. Oh, if I start the process of creating a protein hormone receptor in the rough ER, then I'll gain more points whenever anyone else creates a protein hormone. Players are utilizing their resources and workers to gain sets with the most efficiency. And I love how efficiency goes with this theme of the body, which we can think of as a machine. All right, these are some of my standout picks when choosing games that have some sort of obvious educational benefit. However, it could be argued that most games have some sort of learning benefit, particularly in developing social emotional skills. Also called soft skills, they can include things like learning how to lose and learning from failure, which can help kids in real life deal with loss and learn from their mistakes, communication and team building, building empathy with others, and much more. Board games and video games give a structured social setting in which to practice and develop these skills. So that's it, seven different educational games to try out with your family. I hope you found something new to explore and please let me know in the comments what other educational board games stand out to you. What learning benefits have you seen and experienced playing board games with your family? Thank you for watching Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie and I started this series to talk all about board games and nerd lifestyle, going behind the scenes as an educator, as a board game designer, and sharing recommendations and different news about board games. I hope you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe to see more. As always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time.